Today on Florida Lacrosse, Journey to the Top, it's the last regular season home match for the Gators as they dominate the Commodores on Senior Day. The stakes were high in the Windy City as the Orange and Blue battle the number one team in the nation, the Northwestern Wildcats. And we'll show you how they are gearing up to host the ALC tournament here in Gainesville. Your Florida Lacrosse All Access Pass starts now. Fly up and look, and Cullen is struck for the first time. Shot at a goal. Welcome to Florida Lacrosse, Journey to the Top. I'm Belinda Post. It's hard to believe that the Florida Gator Lacrosse program is just three years old. If you didn't know much about the program, you'd think it's been around for a lot longer than that. The way these girls compete against the best in the country. The way they don't back down to anyone or any team. And it isn't over yet, as their journey to the top continues. On Saturday, April 14th, the 5th ranked Florida Gators welcomed into Donald R. Disney Stadium the 17th ranked Commodores of Vanderbilt in the last regular home match of the season. Go Gators! Go Gators! Go Gators! Go Gators! Go Gators! Before the match, the Gators took time out to recognize their lone senior, Caroline Cochran. Cochran's senior season was cut short after she tore her ACL in the Gators' second match of the season. Even though Cochran hasn't been on the field this season, her presence is still felt among her teammates. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a bummer that our one senior couldn't be out there with us today, but she's a huge impact to our team. She's been here for the past three years. She started our program with us, and she's just such a great leader and a great captain, and she's just been a great mentor through everything. Once senior day was complete, the Gators turned their attention back to the Commodores. Coach O'Leary stressed to the team before the game the importance of winning the battle for possession, something they consistently accomplished the entire afternoon, controlling 15 of the 24 draws and outshooting Vandy 31 to 13. The Gators dominated the first half. Kitty Cullen and Shannon Gilroy each scored three goals apiece. Beautiful play by Florida. Also pitching in were Caroline Chesterman, scoring in the ninth and sixth minute. Just nine minutes of the Gators score again as junior. And Carol Ashley Bruns would find the back of the net with a little over a minute to play in the first half as Florida held a 9-1 to one lead into halftime. You're doing a nice job on the ride. Continue to ride hard. It will pay off. All right, no need to foul. All right, no need to foul. We're going to have people coming behind you to help. Just slow them down. In the second half, fans were barely back in their seats when Vandy scored their second goal of the game. Brittany DeShiel and Caroline Chesterman countered with goals of their own, giving the Gators an 11-2 lead. Florida's offense continued to attack the Commodores as DeShiel, Cullen, Bruns, Gilroy, and Barry all scored goals for the Gators down the stretch. The orange and blue defense also had an exceptional game as well, limiting the Commodores to just five goals. Mikey Mahar made seven saves on the afternoon. Great yeah. save by Mikey Mahar one on one. The 17 to five victory over the Commodores is the Gators 10th straight victory. A team effort. That's exactly what the Gators would need to repeat as ALC champions, a championship that would be won or lost in Chicago, Illinois as the orange and blue took on the number one team in the nation, the Northwestern Wildcats. Northwestern has been ranked number one all season and has won six of the last seven national championships. Florida jumped out to an early two to nothing lead before the Wildcats tied the score at the 22-28 mark in the first half. 10 seconds later, Kitty Cullen put the Gators back out in front. Wiegand and DeShiel followed with goals of their own, giving the orange and blue a five to two lead heading into halftime. Northwestern opened the second half, scoring three straight goals in just 57 seconds, tying the score at five. But these Gators have come too far to let this one slip away. Nora Berry found Ashley Bruns left of the crease, and Bruns found the back of the net to put the Gators back in front, six to five. With their 22-game winning streak on the line, the Wildcats scored two quick goals to pull ahead of the Gators, seven to six. But Florida again showed that their journey to the top would not stop here. With just under 20 minutes to play, Nora Berry tied the score at seven. Then with 547 left in the match, Gobby Wiegan put the Gators ahead for good. The eight to seven victory over the number one ranked Wildcats clinched the Orange and Blue's second straight ALC title. 
the Gators finish their regular season 15-2 and, and a perfect 5-0 record in conference play, their second undefeated conference season. It's amazing. Words can't even describe how we're all feeling right now. I mean, we've worked so hard for this. Um, they're undefeated. They haven't lost on their home field in years, so um, it just feels amazing. Florida's attacking team offense helped provide the winning goal. The defender was giving me a lot of space, so I just took my opportunity and looked to see where the goalie wasn't and just took my shot. I think our attack is really encouraging, and if you miss a shot, they just keep tell you keep shooting. All of our attackers are big threats, so you can't really mark up on one player because it just leaves another player open and gives them a good opportunity. Florida's coaching staff had a very simple yet effective approach for their players. The challenge for our team um, against the number one ranked team in the country, which is a well-deserved honor, I mean they are tremendously well coached um, and, and they just have such great athletes and such great lacrosse players. I mean, I think we, we just basically told our players to, you know, go out, compete, do the best you can, um, be smart and, and whatever happens will happen. But I think our, you know, our team had a great, you know, week of practice um, coming into this game and, and they were focused and so, you know, I think it paid off today. A quality week of practice also translated into solid defensive play from the Gators. We were able to, you know, cause some some Northwestern turnovers, um, but at the same time, I think it was, you know, just us, our team, um, being composed, being smart with the ball, and and defensively, I think we played this. This was our best defensive um, showing of the year thus far. The nation's leader in save percentage. Mikey Mahar made seven saves in the game and held the Cats to their lowest goal total of the year. The Florida Gators, back-to-back -back ALC regular season champs. In just three seasons, the Gators have reached several milestones as a team and individually. It's definitely been a crazy season, especially now being a junior that I've where we've all only been here for three years and all the accomplishments we've made is just crazy and I think that we've just you know earned a lot of respect throughout the lacrosse community and that it's been a really good year for us. Highlights for the season included Ashley Bruns scoring her 100th career goal against Siena. Bruns with it now behind that she turns shoots goes and Ashley Bruns with her 100th goal as a Florida Gator. The team earning their first ever shutout against Fresno State. And head coach Amanda O'Leary winning her 200th Division I game. Three seconds to go. They throw it back to Hayden Judge. That is going to do it. Amanda O'Leary picks up win number 200 on her career. While it wasn't always a smooth and easy journey for the Gators this season, they still came out on top with an ALC regular season title, their second in just three years. It feels amazing, especially because of where we stood two years ago in the ALC, and to come out and do it again a second time is just an amazing feeling. The Gators certainly savored their back-to-back -back title, but now it's back to practice to focus on preparing for the ALC tournament. You hide the ball if you turn and shoot. Don't fake, don't pause. Well, we have a lot of film to watch. Uh, you know, we have, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have competition week, so we're gonna divide the, divide the team in, in two groups. Um, so all of our, you know, drills are gonna be competitive uh, and hopefully we'll come out with a, a winner. So we'll have orange versus blue. Their journey to the top continues next Friday in the comfort of their own home. It's so nice to play at home. It's always nice weather here, and our facilities are unlike any of the facilities that we've played at. Um, so that certainly helps, and just the fans. I know that there'll be a lot of fans out there rooting for us, so that will definitely work in our favor. 100 goals, 200 career wins, two ALC regular season titles, back-to-back -back undefeated conference seasons, and it isn't over yet. The Gators will have the chance to win the 2012 ALC Tournament on their home field as the University of Florida will host the tournament from May 3rd to May 5th. For more information about the tournament or to purchase tickets, you can log on to GatorZone.com. This is the last Journey to the Top show for the season, but you can continue to follow the Gators on GatorZone.com as GatorVision will cover the orange and blue from ALC tournament to the NCAA tournament as Florida's journey to the top continues.
for the UFK. Oh, 